let's just start with an introduction about yourself. So what's your name and your region? Hi, my name's uh, Rachel Mounter and I've got um, three regions in Melbourne and Victoria. So, and I also have a region in Northern New South Wales and Queensland as well. So, so you're very, very busy. Yes. <laughs> very, very busy. <laughs> so with, so cause you've got so such a large amount of franchisees in, in Melbourne and Victoria, what did you do the first, like once you heard the news, like what was the sort of the action points or what did you guys do as a division or a regional? Yeah, well, first up, we kept all of our, obviously, our communication lines open. And as expected, a lot of the franchisees were a little bit confused as to whether we can work or whether we can't work um, and all of that. So we just, we've got a, um, a little WhatsApp group chat, actually. So we sort of communicate on there a lot. Mm. Um, so then it was when it got to more formal things, when we actually got told, yeah, we do have to shut down. Then it was just a formal email out to those guys and plenty of phone calls in the first couple of days. And, um, but once, once that was, I think mentally, when the guys were sort of mentally prepared that they were going to close down for six weeks, then it sort of calmed down a little bit. And, and then they, we sort of looked on what the positives of the next six weeks could be rather than the negatives. So. And what were some of the positives that you, you sort of found or what you wanted to work towards with the, with the franchisees? Yeah, so a lot of the positives were we had focus on now it's time to do the things that are one of the one-day jobs. So when a new franchisee starts, um, they're really busy. And we've had a lot of new guys um, in Victoria as well. So, And a lot of the older guys as well, um, they're, just, they're flat out all the time. And ever since March really since the first sort of wave of restrictions and stuff like that, they were just inundated with <laughs> grooming jobs. It was just, I think because a lot of the, a lot of people were home more. So then they thought, Oh, we're home. So we'll ring a groomer. The groomer can come around to our house. And, and then a lot of the uh, salons were closed as well. Mm. So we just got busier. Mm. Um, and because we get busier, a lot of the behind the scenes, like a lot of the admin, a lot of the, processes that sort of run behind the scenes businesses, they sort of get left and left and left. And it's sort of like a, um, a builder building their own home. It just doesn't happen. Mm. <laughs> yeah. So we just, our focus was in this next six weeks is to put systems in place and do the things that have been on the one day list. Mm. So it's, yeah, they can work more on the, well, they've got the time now to work on the business. Whereas when they're probably working in the business all the time, they don't have that maybe sometimes come home after work and want to do, uh, that, that stuff, but they do have the time now and you're helping them put those things in place. Yeah, exactly. So it's time to work on some marketing strategies. Um, we have a lot of, we have a big digital footprint with our dog wash on Instagram and Facebook and some of the newer franchisees get a little bit confused on how it all sort of works. So it was time to sort of maybe schedule some posts and have that all done. So when they actually do start that it's already done and set for them and it just sort of run its course and then a lot on the, our gyms online systems as well, sort of making sure that, you know, all our pickups are entered and um, practice around how that all works and, mm. you know, setting up of email addresses and setting up accounting software and getting those sort of systems in place as well. Mm. And then yeah. also about the uh, support during the time as well. So I know you guys have been doing regular check-ins. Maybe you want to talk a bit about more about that. Yeah, so we um our the first week one of the shutdown we organised a um a bingo like a Zoom bingo, so we had um all of the regions in Melbourne sort of log in and do that. So that was a bit of fun, mm. um and we gave away some Jim's Monopoly and some bears and all sorts of different things and some Uber vouchers. So yeah, um, yeah. Uber vouchers come very handily, absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah. so that that was a bit of fun. Um, and then we've got this week we've got scheduled. Um, a Zoom meeting for our um, Jim's Pet Store. So oh, okay. how our franchisees can set up their own store within our store and sort of earn some extra money mm. by getting that all set up. So we're doing a tutorial on that this week. And then, so each week we're going to do a schedule a weekly Zoom event, whether it's a little bit of around training and then a little bit of fun as well. Mm. And you're halfway now, we're obviously halfway through it now, hopefully halfway through the point today so how's the overall sentimental feeling from your group been so far 
Yeah, I think um, everyone's sort of relaxed into it now. They're spending a lot of quality time with their family. Their trailers have never been cleaner. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> They're reorganizing their trailers and a couple of the franchisees have posted um, videos of their trailer set up on our group chat. So there's plenty of ideas being exchanged and implemented. So that's actually been really, really good. Mm. You know? I think that's a pretty important point. You said ideas being exchanged. That's good with the dog. I know with your division as well. It's really a lot more, a lot of sharing and stuff like that. And that's great how you've got people improving their trails or improving their businesses and sharing the information during that time, whereas they might otherwise not have done that. Yeah, oh, exactly. It was definitely on one of the one day lists. So mm. yeah, the guys have done really well with that and anything to really save time to fit, to sort of squeeze in an extra job when they're on the road to make the business a little bit more profitable and, and quicker for them is a big bonus. Mm. Are you getting many much inquiries during this time still? We are. Yeah. We are. I think, um, I think there's a, a lot of people in the community thinking that we are able to work. Um, and already now we're sort of halfway point. We've got existing customers contacting our franchisees to book in as soon as they come out of lockdown. So already we're trying to sort of look at, um, schedules for sort of week one where we when we're allowed back to work and it's just trying to fit everyone in obviously everyone wants the first week yeah it's, it's going to be near impossible so i was speaking to jen before and yeah she was saying something similar like it's going to be going to be flat out it's just going to be ridiculous but it's quite it's quite refreshing talking to jen and sue that they're still interacting with their customers a lot you know they're sending pictures or and stuff off their if they, their dogs and stuff back and forth in regards to you know oh needs a wash needs a wash you know can't wait all that sort of stuff but it's quite, it's quite um, nice to hear the interaction between our customers and the franchisees that still goes on even during yeah. this period. Yeah, no, it is awesome actually because they're sort of like the dogs are part of their family and because our groomers, you know, they're there every sort of two, three, four weeks mm. and they sort of really become friends with our customers. So, mm. yeah. yeah, it's definitely, it's definitely an underestimated thing. It's, a lot more, it's way more than just a transaction, isn't it? It's, all, it's definitely a good a relationship there. Oh, absolutely. And that's probably why our franchisees are pretty well booked solid the, all the time because they just build relationships and we just don't have a spot. And you know, that's why we need new franchisees all the time to come in and look after the new customers. I was going to say, you can have a glut of unserviced, uh, you know, which is not a good thing, but it's, you know, if, you, if there's someone interested in buying, you know, a dog wash franchises, you know, particularly, particularly when they, you know, let's say September 13 onwards, it's uh, a pretty good option. Oh, Absolutely. There's all there's all, always been a lot of unserviced leads in the in the dog wash and mm. in Victoria and it's it'll just now we've actually got more trailers on the road than what we have in you know the last few years we just get more unserviced leads and and even daily I run an unserviced report daily for the franchisees at the moment and um, yeah there's either ten or ten to fifteen a day that come through still in lockdown so yeah which is yeah <laughs> and once it's opened up again it's going to be going to be quite, um, quite high numbers. And as you said, the more trails yeah. on the road, the more dog wash uh, vehicles on the road, it's, it's going to create more work. So anyone who's thinking about it, you know, it's a good career change or time, you know, to maybe look at something different and who wouldn't want to work with animals. Exactly. Mm. Yeah. Now, how about you as a regional franchise or how are you going with everything in regards to managing the franchisees? Because I know that's a, a lot of franchisees have been in a similar boat to you. So where, where are you getting information from? You know, how are you, how are you coming up with your plans to motivate people and stuff like that? Yeah, like um, early on, obviously, we got all our information from all the government websites and stuff like that. So we need to really, we had to make sure that everything we were doing was correct. We had um, COVID safe plans sort of ready to go mm. if we were able to operate, you know, and, um, but they are ready to go for when we do start back up. And if anything needs to be changed, that's, we can change that. And other than that, it's just keeping in touch, like just giving the guys a call every week and to see how they're going and not necessarily, you know, talking about business all the time. Like obviously most of that is around business, but a lot of it is just around their well being. you know, making sure that, you know, they're going for the exercise every day and mm. sort of looking at keeping busy. So a lot of the guys are doing homeschooling, so they're pretty keen to get back to work and, you know. And what about the, um, the interstate buddy system, which I know you guys created? Do you want to talk about that? Yeah, so when, when lockdown first happened, um, I did a post on our franchise or group page on, on Facebook with a list of everyone in, in Victoria. And 
um, all the franchisors and the franchisees around the country have sort of been ringing the franchisees in Victoria, just sort of touching base and introducing themselves and seeing how they're going. And so it's we really increased the, the network around the country as well. So it's actually been really good. Yeah, that's, yeah. well, that's circumstance might not normally happen, right? So it's sort of forced to hand. And you guys now, like most what people watching this from the outside, most franchisees will have franchisees and buddies in their region, but this has mm. obviously gone a lot more outside of that. So what's the feedback like been from that? Oh, it's been great. The, the franchisees have loved it. Mm. Um, so they post on our sort of forum that we've got saying thanks for the call today and and because we do there's a lot of franchisees that are sort of living by themselves or um living by themselves and looking after like being a single parent so a call from someone just outside of victoria just to say hey and check in it's just it makes their day mm. yeah That's it's really positive good. and it's it's just it's just really nice and it's sort of what jim's dog wash is all about and how we all band together and we are one team and mm. Yeah, it's good. It's a really good initiative. You guys definitely do have a really good culture, especially hopefully when we can have training back again in person. Anyone who comes along to the gym's group training will notice the dog wash people stick together. And you're yeah, very we sure do. Very supportive <laughs> of each other. Now, is there anything, any, anything that surprised you during this lockdown period? Any insights or something that you've gained whilst being a regional franchise or just something that surprised you, you know, with the franchisees? Ooh, um... Oh, not surprised me, but it's just sort of getting to know them a little bit more on a, a personal level rather than just being mm. rushing and having that two minute call because everyone's busy. It's just a matter of sort of taking a little bit of time and just finding out a little bit more about personal lives and stuff like that and kids and dogs and all of that sort of thing. But yeah, it's it's been good for me because it's made me um, like my, my structure of my day as well like i feel a lot more uh, accountable to these guys because i need to be there with them um even though that i'm i'm not in victoria you know i sort of feel like i'm i'm riding this with them so mm. it's keeping me on my toes which is good true true so we'll leave it there rachel is there anything you want to you want to add maybe or do you want to talk about or that i haven't asked you um i don't think so um mm. i think it's just yeah everyone's just banding together and sort of become one unit and um, it's a really positive vibe out there at the moment. So it's good. And it's, they're honestly, the, the guys are sort of at the point now where they're really taking that time to sort of rest and do the things around the house. And because once lockdown finishes, they're on the ground running in, into Christmas. I can imagine. Yeah. It's going to be a crazy time. Like from that September 13, hopefully, you know, eases up. I can imagine how busy they're going to be. And there's been a lot of disappointed customers, unfortunately, as well. I can imagine <laughs> got that many, much more in service right through the end of the year. Yeah, absolutely. And that's probably where the, um, the guys will feel the pressure the most is because they want to help everyone, but they just physically cannot fit it in. So, yeah. What, what, what yeah. about the physical? I've started asking this question a bit more. What do you, is there anything from a physical standpoint that you, you talk to the franchisees about? I haven't asked this too much yet, but is it because I know you're right into your physical fitness as well, Rachel? So, is there anything you advise them from that sort of standpoint? Is there any sort of creams or what do you, what do you advise them? Um, it's just a matter of because a lot of the guys, like we're dealing in water all the time. So, it's just, you know, all the guys sort of know what their skin allergies are like and most of our the products that we use sometimes some franchisees need to change products but ultimately we just you know we try and keep the guys nice and healthy and correct lifting techniques and sort of looking after their their backs and stuff like that and taking regular breaks and because mm. in the in the trailer there is a is like a platform which comes up and down right for for larger dogs they don't have to really get down and hurt them it's like you know bend over it's they put it down and it gets on and they go up. Yeah, they do. There is a platform in the bath, um, yep. but sometimes there's, it's just, obviously dogs, you, they're not, they don't do as they're told all the time. So they're constantly moving. So our bodies are constantly moving as well and sort of lifting and juggling them around. So it's just a matter of, you know, making sure that they're fully aware of, of all of that. Mm -hmm. Cool.